I'm Julia. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Becca's little sister. For those of you who do know me, uh, you may know that I hold two very distinct roles in my family. The first is that I fix the technology when it breaks, um, whether that's the text messages you received today or the video from last night. I am day of operations. Um, we have the visionary over there. And then the other thing that I do is I serve as a bit of a working memory for my family members. You see, they don't have great memories. But I can tell you exactly what they did, when they did it, who they did it to, and sometimes what they were even wearing. So when I was thinking about what to say at a wedding speech, I was like, oh my god, I know nothing about marriage. I like know nothing about love. I hardly even know about dating. I like still wake up with phone numbers from guys named Mike from the bar. So <laughs> what kind of wedding speech can I give? <laughs> but what I can do is I can tell you the story of Becca and Justin the way I remember it. And maybe they don't even remember it. So I actually want to take you guys back to a time before Justin. Becca was a freshman in college. She had just come back from her first year at Penn State. And she was really distraught, like a total mess. And it had absolutely nothing to do with how much she was partying. And it had more to do with the fact that someone had told her that one in three people meet their significant others at Penn State. And if you know Becca, you know the divide by three rule. Which basically means if Becca tells you a statistic, it is either completely out of this world made up or she's never heard it at all. So one in three people meet their significant others at Penn State, divide by three, she never heard it, she made it up. But she believed it. So, totally distraught, a good 16-year-old sister, I talked her off the ledge, I gave her a pep talk, I sent her to the gym, I made her a Match.com profile, <laughs> and I sent her back to school with like a little bit more hope that she would find a boyfriend. And that following spring, my mom and I were talking about my sister behind her back, and <laughs> we decided to make a bet. And the bet was, I bet that Becca would meet her husband at Penn State. And my mom bet she wouldn't. <laughs> and if I won the bet, my mom would have to take me on an all expense paid vacation. <laughs> and if I lost that bet, inevitably, I would be so old that I could afford to take my mom on vacation. <laughs> so the bet was set and we watched very closely to see if Becca could find a boyfriend at Penn State. And she took her sweet time. Because it wasn't until senior year that she came back and she told me she had met the bouncer at the gingerbread man. And I didn't know what the gingerbread man was, but I was just happy she found a boyfriend. And so I, I was so excited to meet Justin. Um, and it felt like every time I met him after that, we kept putting him through like little tests just to see what he would do. So, for example... The first time we met Justin, we came up to Penn State, my parents and I, we met up with him, we took him out for dinner, uh, which is totally normal, right? Like family takes him out for dinner. Except it was Indian food. I'm not sure he's ever had Indian food or liked it. And my sister didn't come. <laughs> so it was just my parents, me and Justin out to Indian food. <laughs> Hell of a way to meet the in-laws. Uh, and, and it just kept going. Like, the year after he, she introduced him to the family at Christmas, he was new. So he had to put on a Santa suit and have every member of my family sit on his lap and tell him what they wanted for Christmas, <laughs> including both my grandparents and my parents. Needless to say, I found him in the basement in a Santa suit drinking a bottle of whiskey alone. <laughs> and he always handled it like a champ. And years later, it kept happening. Like we went to a wedding in Colorado and we were on this hike and he like heroically like tried to get my family across this stream. And he leaped across and just breaks his ankle on the other side. <laughs> and so Becca decided that the Instagram at the top was like really worth it. So Justin walked down the mountain with a broken ankle alone with my dad for two and a half hours while Becca went to the top. 
And it, it wasn't always like my family testing Justin. Sometimes Becca would throw him something. If you don't believe me, look at their Halloween Instagrams. It's always like Becca looking like super cute and Justin in a diaper or wearing like a unitard. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, like Justin, Justin, Justin will occasionally test Becca. Justin was the one who wanted a dog. Becca thought she didn't like animals. Um, if you, if you want to see her really leaning in and just like rolling with the punches, take a look at Penny's Instagram. That is just rising to the occasion. <laughs> so anyways, I have eight years of memories. I have so much content to pull from for this wedding speech. And so again, I don't, I don't know anything about advice to give to you today at your wedding day. But looking back at all these memories, I can tell you three things that I know for certain, that I absolutely know to be true. The first is, I've never seen two people more committed to each other than I, I have seen you two over the past eight years. You have taken every challenge that has been thrown at you, whether it's a Santa suit or a new puppy, and you have risen to the occasion and turned it into an amazing memory. The second thing I know absolutely to be true. Someone once told me that if you meet someone and they give you butterflies and you get weak in your knees, that is absolutely not the person you should marry. The person you should marry, when you're with them, you feel calm. You feel like at ease around them. And if you know Becca and Justin and you've been around them, you feel that. They're never calm, but they seem to calm each other down. Like they've, they've found a peace to themselves. Like they've found home, no matter whether it's in Penn State or in LA, there's a piece of home in each of them that they bring to each other and it's a sense that you can, you can feel it. Oh, and the third thing I know is that I have an all expense paid vacation <laughs> coming up this year. So, if you don't mind, will everyone please raise a glass to Becca and Justin, to the bride and groom. May you continue to challenge each other. May you always rise to the occasion and never forget where home is. Cheers.